In this lecture, we will implement this PLL that we have been discussing in LTSPY starting from scratch. We'll see how to implement this phase detector and the charge pump as well as how to implement the VCO. So first we need a uh, the VCO. Okay, for VCO just uh, right click and go to the components or you can press F2 as well. So we will be using a modulator. So just type uh, this uh, modulate. Okay, so yeah, so this is a modulator where uh, it can act as an FM signal and AM signal. Uh, so definitely we'll go for a frequency modulation. VCO is nothing but a frequency modulation uh, by applying a you know voltage here. Okay, so uh, let's uh, and of course AM will just ground it. Okay, so go and just ground it. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so now, um, of course, we need to we need to have a phase detector. So uh, for having a phase detector, just again right click, go to the components, and just type phase V H uh, I dt okay so this is the uh, phase detector okay so this basically this blocks cover the uh, phase detector as well as the uh, charge pump okay if you go back to our previous lecture right so uh, the, this whole thing this whole portion is this one okay so if what I, here i need to just mention is my ip current so uh, if i just mention my ip current then it takes care of okay so just go here and in the value just type as i out is equal to let's give some value 65 micro uh, ampere okay we can move this one by maybe down here okay so and of course uh, initially let's see just uh, we'll connect the output of the uh, phase detector we uh, of course it will be connected and uh, to the input and of course let's just maybe connect just a capacitor okay uh, just capacitor and we'll see that uh, of course as we have mentioned in the theory that this is an unstable system okay so we'll see that and maybe after that we'll put the resistor and make it stable connect it okay okay so now uh, of course few things we have to do okay so the input will be going from uh, from here and of course the i'll be connecting this node to the output okay and uh, that's again component but the best way is press the shortcut key F2 then voltage okay bring it here and then again draft we'll get the ground here we need to put a ground here as well you can just ground it um yeah and then you can connect the wires you can run through this component and just connect it here okay yeah so we are almost done we just need to set the parameter of course here we need to set the kvco so for that just type in this value as mark Just type uh, mark equal to FREQH space equal to FREQL, okay, and uh, yeah, so that 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 one you, you have to do, and of course this will come up, and then you can if you want you can move it to a uh, better page, move it down at the bottom, okay. So now we need to add a uh, spice directive. So basically, as I was also mentioning in the uh, previous video that uh, this sets the KVCO of this uh, modulator. So 
um, FREQH is the frequency that is going to generate at 1 volt and FREQL is the one that is going to generate at the low frequency means at 0 volt at when the control voltage is 0 volt okay so uh, let me uh, give, write a spice directive something like this go to spice directive dot dot parameter pram um, freqh equal to 300e6 that is it's going to uh, you know the generate a frequency of 300 megahertz at 1 volt again uh, go to again edit sorry draft spice directive dot p a r a m f r e q l equal to 100 e 6 that means it's going to uh, generate a frequency of you know 100 megahertz at 0 volt so this is what the vco characteristics is going to look like so um, you know this is the vcon control voltage and uh, so at 0 volt it's going to generate you know at 0 volt it's going to generate a frequency f out of you know this is 100 megahertz and at 1 volt at 1 volt it is going to generate a you know a frequency of uh, 300 megahertz so if you see the slope or the kvco of this line the kvco of this um, the vco is 100 minus 200 so this is 1 volt so it is 200 megahertz per volt okay so here i have a vco with 200 megahertz per volt kvco okay so now let's uh, give this uh, give this maybe 18 picofarad to start with okay so here we just want to see how the pll is locking uh, more design details will be covered later on once we uh, cover some part of the theory again so yeah <clears throat> so now of course uh, if you see here uh, at around at the middle right so at around 0.5 volt if i want it this to settle at around 0.5 volt so it's going to generate a 200 megahertz uh, frequency okay so uh, i'm going to maybe use a sine wave generator okay and uh, let's it generate 200 megahertz 200 MEZ for megahertz you need to write MEZ and amplitude maybe just uh, will you say DC offset of 0.5 and amplitude maybe 0 0.5 so basically I will have a sine wave uh, which is going from you know 0 to 1 volt okay and similarly I want the output of this one also from going from 0 to 1 volt so for that you can just write V high to be 1 volt and V low to be again um, 0 okay that's it okay so maybe just a little bit arrangement of these levels I can just uh, move this one it's overlapping the levels are overlapping okay fine so I'm almost set uh, I just need to now uh, give the uh, transient simulation command okay so now let's um, give the simulation command so dot p r a n maybe 10 microseconds will run okay fine so i'm almost done so as i mentioned before that only connecting the capacitor is going to make the uh, pll an unstable system okay so if i just run it okay we can see here that yes i think it looks like you know the control voltage of the PLL is oscillating okay so let's give this name as vcont so net name v control is UMT control okay so we can see here that the uh, control voltage it is uh, oscillating of course I can just write here oh yeah I can see here right 
the control voltage is oscillating okay so it is not um, I should say that uh, it is not uh, settling okay so the reason is because uh, we have two uh, for the open loop transfer function that we have discussed in the theory that there are two uh, poles in the origin okay so now what I am going to do is so I'm going to add a resistance in series this is what we have seen okay so um, edit move okay so I'm going to add a resistor in series okay so let me add a resistance of 18 k or it may be too high 5k okay and then let's do the simulation again so yeah we can see that looks like it is locking so if you see here the average value uh, if you see here the average value here is all it's reaching uh, yes it's reaching 500 and yeah it looks like it is locking so we have this response very nicely but only thing that we can see here is there are a lot of spikes are here right a lot of big spikes right sudden spikes the sudden jump right so the reason is uh, the reason is very simple so uh, because of this resistance there can be a sudden jump in the current okay so especially if it is uh, charging if i have some voltage right here and especially if the if the phase detector is turned on so there will be an ir jump so if we go to this diagram here right so um, so if uh, if suddenly uh, th th this is some voltage and if suddenly suppose qa is on so there will be a jump of you know uh, there will be like if I just turn on this current source there will be a jump of IP into RP voltage okay suppose it, it is settled to some value and suddenly because the VCO frequency can drift and you know the phase detector can again detect the drifting and you know because of which uh, there can be a jump of uh, IP into RP so because of which there is a jump in the control voltage okay so we'll see how to avoid that okay but overall if you see the pll is uh, locked if we want uh, we can uh, even plot the frequency here okay so this is a uh, frequency and if i zoom it in this portion and maybe let's try to you know uh, let's try to plot the fft of this one pud fft of maybe this node this is the output node so we can see here that it has very nicely log uh, at a frequency which is you know uh, this one so the frequency that it has log is exactly at 200 megahertz we can zoom in far and see that this is exactly at 200 megahertz okay you can see at this value yeah or if you want we can click this and then uh, bring the cursor here and you can see that exactly it is uh, locked at 200 megahertz okay yeah so uh, but of course as i was mentioning that there is a still a jump uh, in the control voltage and we want to avoid that okay because of this uh, there can be jitters and all so um, and uh, in actual pl there will be a lot of jitters right so now how do we how do we get rid of that so the easy way to get rid of this jump and to make it more stable is we can add a uh, capacitor again here capacitor will add okay maybe maybe a very small cap okay so let's add maybe a small cap as uh, as maybe as two pico okay parrot okay or even smaller we can add now let's run it okay so if we see here the uh, the the you know the ripples that it has reduced a lot 
we can see a lot of reduction in the ripple voltage okay so uh, of course uh, we can decrease it even further okay but if you see the loop response it has instead of you know uh, if you see previously when there was no capacitor uh, it was uh, settling in a very nice way but now looks like with the introduction of this one more capacitor you can see there there is an overshoot okay so uh, yeah so this is what uh, is happening okay the reason is as soon as we add this capacitor we are going to add one more fold in the open loop transfer function okay and this is going to reduce my phase margin okay so we will uh, discuss about this uh, this loop dynamics including this capacitor more in the theory after this simulation the next lecture but before ending uh, this analysis uh, what i suggest is in the, you please uh, maybe download this file or you can start building this block starting from scratch okay it's very easy and uh, try to simulate and see the performance yourself to get a more feeling and understanding of this PLL you can change the various parameters and see how it is changing okay 